didn't have any affirmatives yet, but if you did, you still have a minute to shout out. This is uh, what you often see. Actually, you see stuff like this in the U.S., but I love these little these little sign these little um, way markers. So this is at the this is at the corner of a uh, path I was in in 2017, the Eildon Hills Path. I'll tell you all about that. Whoops, let's back up. Eildon Hills Path and Saint Cuthbert's Way, uh, which is in the northern part of England, what they call the borders. And uh, uh, my first footpath was along the South Downs and the Seven Sisters in 1998. I didn't have photos of that walk. This is actually, though, 10 years later, I went back and walked it with my wife and son. And um, we went to this. This is basically the place where we were. This is one of the most iconic and famous spots along the southern coast of England is called the Seven Sisters. There are actually seven hills that go up and down like this uh, and land up in the Kookmere River. And I can show you uh, a map of that in a minute in the UK. But then when I went back in 2008, I took a camera. So a lot of my photos from that are from 2008. And this is what the South Downs is along there. Here's an interesting thing. A lot of you might know about the White Cliffs of Dover, which are chalk. The Seven Sisters and uh, Beachy Head are actually more iconic and more beautiful than the White Cliffs of Dover, but they're all the same thing. England, uh, most of Southern England, as well as a good part of France, uh, Western France is actually uh, on white chalk. And once upon a time, there was a solid landscape between the two and people could walk over from what about 10,000 years ago, you could walk over from what is now France to England. And uh, actually, where the, where the spot where this photo is taken, there was a little historical marker that says there was a Bronze Age fort there. That means it was about uh, three, 1000 BC or about 3000 years ago. And um, however, when it was built, the coastline of England was three kilometers away. Uh, so it had eroded three kilometers or about a, a kilometer per thousand years or about a, a meter a year. Uh, collected lots of books over the years on walking in England, both before, during, and after my walks. Here's one of my favorite ones called the long walks in England, Scotland, and Wales. Another fun thing to have along with you in a walk is uh, an ordnance survey map. They're, they're kind of like the, what we call the topographical maps in the U S they're bigger, they're more detailed. And of course they have a lot more older stuff than our topographical maps on our topographical maps generally have only things from European settlement on. So that's what three, 400 years at the most. Whereas uh, in England, they've got stuff that's, you know, that's thousands of years old. Uh, some of the, you know, you can pick up maps and stuff in England free brochures. This is a couple of them, the South Downs way. That's another picture of the, of the seven sisters. Uh, that's the uh, tr public transport guy. So if you want to, you know, if you want to take public transport to where you start your walk, you can do that in the UK. We can't do that in here. You can't get a, a bus that will take you up to the Appalachian Trail. Here's a map of the Cotswold Way. This, um, These are what are called the national footpaths of England. So they have this national footpath system. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of local footpaths besides these. These are just the national footpaths. And to give you a little bit of a history, uh, a lot of these paths are thousands of years old, and they've been there since the area was first settled. I mean, some of them might be, there's one right here called Ridgeway along here. Uh, portions of that might be 10,000 years old. They've been walk, humans been walking that landscape along the top of that ridges for a long time. And, but these are, are now marked national trails, and you can get a map for each of these. Uh, the ones I've been on are the Cotswold Way, and then I've been on the South Downs Way, which runs along here. This is this little ending point. You, we were looking at the, uh, the, the, the cliffs, the Seven Sisters. That's where this little loop is at the end. And um, I've also been up here in some of these walks. I've been on, on a bit on Hadrian's Wall Path, and then a few other little sections here and there, some of these other paths.
But again, the, uh, here's a unique thing um, about the footpaths in England and also would be true of a lot of Europe. Number one, in England, the footpaths um, supersede any kind of local property ownership. So if a footpath goes across your property, you can't block it off or put a building in it or anything. Um, that footpath is, has rights. It's like a, a right away the, over your land period. I, if I understand correctly in Scotland, you can't even trespass on, it can't even be called trespassing. If you go on anyone's land, um, they can put a sign that says, please don't walk here, but you can't actually trespass on their property. And uh, in the many cases where these routes cross over a farm field or something like that, or maybe it's a pasture, they have styles so you can get up over the fences because they don't want you letting the cows out or the sheep out, mostly sheep. Um, but the South Downs, uh, this is the, the first one I hiked on in 2000, 1998 and 2008. Um, this, the, like I mentioned, the Southern England sits on, on chalk. And there's no better place to see it than on the South Downs. The Salisbury Plain, which a lot of us know, this famous landscape where Stonehenge is and Avebury and other places, um, it's all part of that, that South, that chalk land. And what's great about it is that there's a springy green turf on top of the chalk, but where the footpaths are worn down, you're walking on this just springy kind of chalk, which number one, makes it real easy to see. <laughs> you can follow your path without a problem. But also, um, it's very comfortable to walk on. Um, and down inside those uh, uh, chalk underlayment, which in the chalk is basically uh, the, the skeletal remains of fish from million years of sea, you know, like it was a seashore here back when the earth was all configured differently, when the land masses were in different places, there'd be, was a ancient seabed there and the fish died and the bones went to the bottom and that created the chalk. And in it, there are little bits of silica and that created uh, flint. Uh, so as I mentioned before, public footpaths are right away. So what's really nice is if you've got a map and you can go on a footpath, you can follow it and you're allowed to go there. Very, very different than in the US. So we have uh, public lands, and public parks where you can go walking and you're allowed to walk there. But like where I live, which is a, is a gorgeous area, unless a per, uh, the person owns a property has agreed to let people walk there. It's very common to see a sign that says no trespassing, you know, no, don't, you're not allowed on here and that kind of thing. Very different than in England. Um, let me show you a map of dog. Or trespassers land. will be shot on Side. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, Fred, that's so that's so depressing to tell me that. Uh, let's pull up a map of Doggerland here to give you an idea. This is this is kind of fun. Um, uh, this map right here is the one that I find the most interesting. Um, if you, that one's it's kind of zoomed in, isn't it? Let's zoom that out. Uh, that's still too zoomed in. Let's see if I can, let me see if I can get a different one. It's a little more zoomed out for you. Um, the map of Doggerland. Let's see, uh, this one will show you right here. Um, this gives you an idea of what Doggerland was. So if you look at it closely, you'll see, oh, that's, that's England right there, okay? And this is France over here. And, and, and Holland and those places. Well, back in the time when the seas were hundreds of feet lower, okay? So during the Great Ice Age, when all that ice piled up on top of the, the you know, Northern Hemisphere, that water wasn't in the ocean then. So the oceans were several, the sea coasts were in some cases hundreds of feet lower. And so this was all open land. This, so you could walk, literally just walk across this. This is called Doggerland. And they have in recent years found tools and things. They've kind of mapped out this ancient land, which was where the people, you know, it was a low land, you know, between England and, and France, but it was solid land you could walk on. They went, they found hunting tools and implements and things.